a very good evening to all of you. Uh, I hope all of you are doing great. Uh, it has been quite a long time that I uploaded my last video on a tribal writer, Nirmala Putul, mountain uh, woman. This time, I have found another beautiful poem, which is quite a lot of uh, discussed quite a lot of times and uh, it has made its entry into the curriculum the undergraduate and postgraduate curriculum of premium institutes all over india the poem is night of the scorpion by nisim ezekiel now ezekiel is a very famous indian writer and i don't like to spend time discussing about the biography of the writer and the year of publication of the poem and such and uh, this and this about the poem because these informations are quite easily available on net so you can get it from google if you google it you can get so many informations about the poem now let us start talking about the poem before I explain line by line and explain about the nuances of the poem, about the cultural significance of the poem, about the message it, uh, it, it, it delivers, let me just uh, spend a few minutes about the summary of the poem. Night of the Scorpion is an account of the experience of the young poet and he talks about the suffering encountered by his mother when she was stung by a scorpion uh, on a rainy night uh, a night when it was raining actually and then it actually talks about the uh, different perspectives, different attitudes of the people of the society towards the woman, towards the and and and, and it also uh, talks about the superstitions and the cultural belief about the Indian people of the Indian people, and. Uh, it also talks about the affection of a mother towards uh, her son. Well, uh, let's move on to the poem. I remember the night my mother was stung by a scorpion. Ten hours of steady rain had driven him to crawl beneath a sack of rice. Parting with his poison, flush of diabolic tail in the dark room, he risked the rain again. The pigeons came like swarms of flies and buzzed the name of God a hundred times to paralyze the evil one. With candles and with lanterns throwing giant scorpion shadows, on the mud baked walls, they searched for him. He was not found. They clicked their tongues. With every movement that the scorpion made his poison moved in mother's blood, they said. May he sit still, they said. May the sense of your previous birth be burned away tonight. They said, may your suffering decrease the misfortunes of your next birth. They said, may the sum of all evil balanced in this unreal world against the sum of good become diminished by your pain. May the poison purify your flesh of desire and your spirit of ambition, they said. 
and they sat around on the floor with my mother in the center on the piece of understanding on each face more candles more lanterns more neighbors more insects and the endless rain my mother twisted through and through groaning on a mat my father skeptic rationalist trying every curse and blessing powder mixer herb and hybrid he even poured a little paraffin upon the bitten toe and put a match to it i watched the flame feeding on my mother i watched the holy man perform his rites to tame the poison with an incantation after 20 hours it lost its sting my mother only said thank god the scorpion picked on me and spared my children well this is a very uh, beautiful poem and as you can find from my reading that there is no uh, rhyme uh, rhyme pattern in the poem there is an uneven uh, rhyme pattern and uh, it actually uh, throws light on the narration done by a young boy now from the words used the vocabulary and all that and the 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 pattern of description you can find that the the narrative uh, the, the the narration was done by a boy and since it was done by a boy young boy the vocabulary of the boy was not very strong so you know it is quite uh, you know an acceptable fact for an indian uh, boy that he will not be having uh, a strong vocabulary and from the perspective of the boy it is quite uh, realistic so the the expression the the narration the description everything has been done in a very uh, realistic uh, way in a, in a realistic manner by the poet set in a rural village night of the scorpion presents the simple incident of the poet's mother stung by a scorpion and how it throws light on the superstitious mind of the village people uh, since the public the the people described here are village people villagers simple uh, ignorant villagers uh, rustic villagers rustics um not in a very positive manner but not so caustic way of description also it's not very caustic uh, the poet is actually not the narrator is not casting as person against the ignorance and the superstition of the people yes of course he is criticizes he is criticizing but the attitude is not very caustic it is actually quite lenient on part of the writer well let me allude to um, thomas gray's elegy written on a country churchyard or uh, where he talks about the ignorance of the villagers and how he laments the loss of the immense potentials of the villagers so the villagers described by uh, gray and the villagers described by uh, by by ezekiel i mean not ezekiel we cannot call uh, ezekiel better we can call him as the narrator 
So the villagers described by the narrator and the villagers described by Gray, the representation is quite different. For Gray, the villagers were having potentials and they could not express their potentials because of poverty. I quote one line, chill penury repressed their souls. Full many a flower that bloomed unseen. Full many a flower that bloomed unseen. And he also talked about that there are so many Cromwells, Miltons among the villagers. So some of them uh, could have become a great leader like Cromwell. Some of them could have become a great poet like John Milton. However, they could not become because of their poverty. So they are now sleeping in the black chamber, in their tomb, in the grave. But here, the representation is a bit different. Here, the poet is highlighting the ignorance, the superstition, of course, in a negative manner. Um, but He's not very caustic. For example, we don't find the biting satire, the satiric attitude that we can find in the poems of Pope or even in the poems of uh, Dryden. Uh, Dryden in his MacFlecno, um, you know, attacked Shadowell in a very bitter manner, in a very uh, caustic manner. Pope in Rape of the Lock, um, satirizes uh, Belinda and uh, uh, the, the, the aristocratic people of that time in a very caustic manner, in a very, uh, in a very satiric manner, which is very pungent and bitter. But here, the representation is not very pungent. Of course, there is a, you know, uh, disapproval from the attitude of the writer, from the narrator. Of course, he is disapproving of the superstition, of the ignorance of the villagers, but he is not, in a way, satirizing. You know, that is actually quite uh, different that you can find uh, in the attitude of the narrator, the poet narrator, we can call in a better manner, the poet narrator. Uh, the poem may also be viewed as a tale, really, as a tale narrated as, as a narration surrounding the theme of perspectives. Yes, as I told you in the beginning, that it deals with the matter, the theme of perspective. Here we can have the three perspectives, perspective of the poet, narrator, poet narrator, perspective of the villagers, perspective of the mother. So these are three chief perspectives that we can have, we can find in the poem. And of course, there is also the perspective of the father of the poet also. The eeriness of the atmosphere, double e r i n e w s. The eeriness of the atmosphere is hinted at by the poet when he is making a reference to the night. I just would like to uh, go to the line of the poem. I remember the night my mother was stung by a scorpion. Ten hours of Steady rain had driven him to crawl beneath a sack of rice. So the poet is talking about the night. Night which is dark. Night, a rainy night, night when it's raining cats and dogs. It's not drizzle but it's raining cats and dogs. So the description of the rainy night the darkness of the night create 
an atmosphere of eeriness, double e r i n e w s. Now, when we are actually talking about the eeriness of the atmosphere, of course, we can, uh, you know, allude to, we can remember uh, Coleridge's poem Christabel. In Christabel, poet Coleridge also builds an atmosphere of eeriness. Now, uh, again, there is a difference. The eeriness uh, 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 created by Conridge uh, is not very negative. It is actually uh, highlighting the supernaturalism. It is actually uh, hinting at some kind of supernatural atmosphere. Whereas in Nissim Ezekiel's Night of the Scorpion, this is actually quite a bit a negative uh, representation of darkness. Darkness uh, uh, which is suggestive of uh, impending doom. That you can say rather, it is suggestive of uh, impending doom. So it's quite uh, negative. Uh, after biting the poet's mother, I mean the narrator's mother, the scorpion was hiding itself. I mean, it escaped the rain, incessant rain, by crawling back into the sack of rice as if it was secretly trying to hide itself from the crime. Now, the poet is, uh, you know, uh, describing the scorpion not as it but as him. Probably uh, to personify the scorpion, probably, yes, probably to personify the scorpion and because uh, 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 probably the scorpion is also um, a character in this, uh, you know, in this drama probably. Since if we take this as a drama, the there are many characters here. Uh, the poet is there, of course, the mother is there, the father is there, the villagers are there, and of course, the scorpion itself is a character. So, as if the scorpion himself, rather, is a character, and after committing the crime, after committing the crime, is actually uh, evading the crime, is actually, you know, uh, secretly hiding uh, itself from the crime scene by crawling behind, crawling behind the sack of rice. Now, the description of the uh, atmosphere, uh, the description of the house, description of the, the, the entire setting uh, also, you know, throws light on the, you know, the economic condition of the poet. Uh, maybe uh, he belonged to uh, a middle class uh, family, um, not very poor, but not uh, very rich also. So, uh, yes, uh, he probably belonged to a middle class family. Uh, so, you know, in a middle class uh, household, uh, you know, uh, if he would have, uh, you know, had a chance uh, to, 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 to have a look at the uh, you know uh, the houses in the village in a village house uh, you know most of the houses uh, you know there is a place where they store uh, uh, sacks of rice uh, grains um, and these other things in fact i uh, have uh, witnessed i have seen this uh, storing of the rice and the grains uh, in 
uh, village since I uh, uh, since uh, I personally uh, hail uh, from a village from a small village I had an opportunity to 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 uh, uh, to, uh, to witness uh, to to see this kind of uh, things so um, it is again a realistic uh, representation of a village household where uh, the people are storing the rice and the grains then we can say that the scorpion is actually an emblem of crime it is actually an emblem of crime it is an emblem of evil and this is further you know evoked by the description of the poet when he's describing the tail of the of the poet uh, of, the, of the scorpion as you know i quote diabolic you know parting with his poison flash of diabolic tail in the dark room he risked the rain again you know this is quite interesting that uh, the scorpion uh, had bitten the mother of the poet uh, he had it has uh, stunned the poet's mother so the poet is of course you know angry with the scorpion but on the other hand since he's a young boy uh, since he's not uh, you know uh, so he's not uh, grown up to be an adult since you know um, he's not an adult he's just a young boy he's actually you know having a, a little bit of uh, sympathy for the scorpion and that is why he's uh, using the words like risk the rain again so as if uh, the scorpion is uh, again uh, coming out of the sack of rice and uh, uh, going uh, and, and the poet is saying that he risked his uh, he risked the rain again that is in order to uh, uh, after biting the poet's mother in order to you know escape uh, from the crime scene in order to uh, uh, in order to uh, uh, ha in order to take a shelter uh, from the rain it uh, crawled behind the sack of rice but again it came out and the poet is saying that it risked the rain again as if it again uh, came in the rain and is actually risking his uh, life so uh, the use of the word uh, risk is uh, you know uh, throwing light on the the sympathy um, expressed by the poet uh, for the scorpion so you know <clears throat> since uh, he's a young boy his mind is actually not um, polluted not tarnished by all kind of complexities and everything that's why you know uh, we can allude to William Blake that when Blake uh, talks about the uh, lamb, the innocence of the lamb, we can allude to lamb and tiger. Now, in a lamb, Blake is actually uh, highlighting the innocence of the lamb. So, the childlike innocence uh, is, uh, you know, evident in the young boy. Uh, he's, of course, not uh, uh, so experienced like the tiger not so uh, experienced like the tiger it's not he's not the tiger described by blake tiger tiger burning bright in the forest of the night what immortal hand or eye could frame thy fearful symmetry but he's actually the innocent lamb little lamb who made thee little lamb who made thee dost thou know who made thee this is actually the description of blake's well um then we can say that as soon as the news is spread in the village like wildfire the villagers 
thronged at the uh, poet's house. So, you know, in a small village when people come to know about any uh, danger, if they come to know about any accident, they come to know if someone is in danger, all of them come, they gather. And this is actually, you know, uh, this is a common uh, mentality, common attitude of the villagers uh, that they gather and they actually, you know, try to protect the family. They try to extend their help and support to the family, both uh, morally and physically. They try to extend their support and help to the family. Similarly, when uh, the news of the poet's mother being stung by a scorpion spread in the village, all of them gathered. They thronged at the poet's uh, house. Now, just look at the phrase, look at the vocabulary used by the poet. And from that, you can have a clear idea about the attitude of the uh, narrator, the attitude of the poet narrator. The pigeons came like swarms of flies and buzzed the name of God a hundred times to paralyze the evil one. So this is the first example of the superstitious belief of the villagers that the poet is highlighting. Another thing that you can uh, have an idea from the, uh, from the line that the poet is using, they came like swarms of flies and buzzed the name of God. Now, uh, when you described someone, a group of people coming and you are comparing uh, their coming to the swarming of the flies, then of course you are rather disapproving of their coming. I mean, you cannot directly tell them that you don't come. You directly tell them not to come. You can directly forbid them from coming, but you are actually not exactly supporting. You are not actually approving. You are quite disapproving of their uh, coming to the house. And that is evident from the uh, from the line. They came like swarms of flies and birds. You know, um, when there is a you know uh, leftover on the food, the food leftover on the plate, the <clears throat> flies will be will be swarming, and the flies will be uh, will be will be coming. So you are, it, that's actually quite you know an obnoxious uh, you know scene. You are actually you know, quite, uh, you know, uh, that's a kind of you know, obnoxious uh, sin. That's quite, you know, uh, that's something you don't like. Uh, so similarly, the poet is actually not also uh, liking their coming. They, uh, he's also not approving of their coming. But since he's a young boy, he's not a guardian of the family. He's not the head of the family. He cannot directly tell them not to come. He cannot directly you know, forbid them from coming. But yes, uh, he's not actually approving of their coming. Because he's quite aware of the uh, attitude of the villagers that instead of doing something uh, scientific, instead of doing something reasonable, they will be talking about the <coughs> superstitions and uh, they will be and, um, saying so many things which, is, which actually will not uh, help the mother to heal. Uh, he, uh, she will not be, you know, coming around here. She will not be uh, getting well. Rather, these people will be, you know, talking uh, so many things about the superstitions and all that. <clears throat> and that is evident from the line when he said that they swarmed and burst the name of God a hundred times to paralyze the evil one. So when, uh, you know, a scorpion bite is that when you are bitten by a scorpion, you will try to find a scientific remedy. You will try to find the, the proper way to, to treat the, the, the victim. How um, you will be first trying to, you know, uh, tie the place of the wound and then uh, the uh, then uh, then you will be trying to you know apply some kind of uh, medicine you will be trying to uh, you know 
doing everything to 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 uh, to render a scientific uh, 